I'm Dave again here with another question bank question in astrophysics, D1. We're looking at parallax. Uh, this question is about some properties of Barnard's star. Barnard's star is in this constellation. I'm not going to attempt to uh, pronounce it. You can have a go for yourself if you like. Uh, but it has a parallax angle of 0 0.549 arc seconds, as measured from Earth. Arc seconds are kind of an unusual unit for uh, angles. They're for very, very small angles. One arc second is one three thousand six hundredth of a degree. But that's beside the point. Uh, what they're actually asking us to do is, uh, with the aid of a suitable diagram, explain what's meant by parallax angle and outline how you measure it. So maybe we'll start with a, a diagram. Let's put uh, Barnard's star right here. Uh, and far away from it, let's put the sun. Around the sun, there is the Earth. Uh, and light from Barnard's star travels through space to the Earth. But the Earth isn't always here. Six months later, six months later, it's going to be over here. Uh, and when it's over here, we're still going to be able to see Barnard's star, but by observing a ray of light traveling this way. We know the separation between the Earth and the Sun. It's two astronomical units. Astronomical unit is the distance between the Sun and the Earth. Uh, and with that and a measurement of this angle, we can measure the distance to Barnard's star. This angle is the angle between the ray of light reaching the Earth from Barnard's star now and the ray of light reaching the Earth from Barnard's star six months from now. Uh, so what is meant by the parallax angle? The parallax angle is the angle between the ray of light reaching the Earth from a star now and the ray of light reaching the Earth from a star six months from now. Uh, how is it used? Uh, how, how, or outline how we measure it. We measure it by, uh, excuse me there. We measure it by comparing the position of Barnard's star uh, to the background stars, way over here. So stars which are much, much further away. Because if we observe the light today, it appears to be coming from this region of the background. But six months later, it appears to be here. So when we look at the sky, which looks two-dimensional to us because it's so far away, Barnard's star appears to be right here today, but will appear to be here later. And using those two positions, we can work out the parallax angle. So it's measured by uh, observing how a nearby star appears to change position relative to faraway stars. <clears throat> right, we want to deduce that the distance of Barnard's star from the sun is 5.49 light years. Um, well, the nice thing about parallax angles is that they work very cleanly into distances. The distance to Barnard's star is just 1 divided by the parallax angle, provided that the parallax angle is measured in arc seconds and the distance is measured in parsecs. And the angle is measured in arc seconds, so that's 0 0.549, giving us uh, 1.82 parsecs. Uh, but the question didn't say, well, the question wants, to show us, wants us to show that the distance is 5.49 light years, so we simply need to convert parsecs to light years. 
the, the relative factor between the two is 3.26 light years per parsec for a total of 5.94 light years. Uh, next up, we're given some information about the ratio of the apparent brightness of Barnard's star to the apparent brightness of the sun. We know the value of that. And we're first asked to define the term apparent brightness, which is something that we have an equation for. B equals L on 4 pi d squared. Uh, so we need to define all those terms. B is apparent brightness. L is luminosity. And D is the distance to Earth. Uh, always a good idea to back that up with a description. So we'll say that uh, apparent brightness is the power received per square meter at Earth. So power received from the star per square meter at Earth. Basically what we're doing is we're taking the total power emitted by the star, the luminosity, and we're dividing that by the number of square meters in the shell that the Earth lies in. So we're dividing that power into all of the square meters that it has to pass through to determine how much power passes through each square meter. And that's the apparent brightness, how bright the star appears in the sky. Uh, we want to use the information we have now to determine the luminosity of Barnard's star to the luminosity of the sun. Uh, so we know the apparent brightness of Barnard's star to the apparent brightness of the sun is 2.6 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we know that apparent brightness can be calculated as the luminosity divided by 4 pi times the distance to the Earth squared. Same for the sun. And that's still equal to 2.6 times 10 to the negative 14th. Uh, 4 pi cancels with 4 pi. I can multiply across by the distance from the Earth to Barnard star squared and divide across by the distance from the Sun to the Earth squared. We still have the 2.6 times 10 to the negative 14th. And that gives me the luminosity of Barnard star to the luminosity of the Sun. The distance to Barnard's star, we were told, was 5.94 light years. And now we need the, uh, the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Uh, the distance from the Earth to the Sun is 1 AU. That's the definition of an AU. And they tell us here that to convert AU to light years, we use the relationship 1 light year is 6.3 times 10 to the fourth AU. So flipping that around, 1 AU is 1 on. 6.4 times 10 to the fourth. Take that and square it, and we'll keep our 2.6 times 10 to the negative 14 up here. Time for the calculator to tell us that the result is 3.6 times 10 to the negative third, uh, which interestingly tells us that Barnard's star is a much smaller star than the sun. It's about 1,000th the power of our sun, and our sun being, you know, a, a small to medium-sized star to begin with. Yeah, sorry, Barnard, your star is kind of puny. <laughs>